Hello and welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto from Erie Community College or ECC near Buffalo, New York. And today I want to discuss press form layouts. This topic is relevant to both pre-press and the press room. So let's define what a press room layout is. Uh, a layout is the placement and or the arrangement of items on a press sheet, which we call a form. So when you make booklets, you have to have folded signatures. This layout would be called an imposition, which is going from single pages or reader spreads to printer spreads, the way they're arranged or laid out on a press sheet. The layout should be efficient. We don't want to waste expensive paper space. And some layouts reduce material costs, uh, paper and plates, and they also reduce labor costs. There's three types of layouts. Uh, a flat layout means that there's no form folding, uh, just a finished product trimming. The finished product might still need to have some folding, however. Signatures is when you have to take a press form and fold it into a signature. And then packaging is a special circumstance where we have step and repeat or nested or reverse nested cartons that need to be die cut. So we start with reverse engineering. Reverse engineering means you go to the end of the process, which is bindery, and you work your way backwards from bindery to the press room to pre-press. So the needs and the requirements of the bindery must be met. What we want to do here is we want to preserve that square corner for the cutting and for folding accuracy. And on a press layout, we identify the gripper with two X's and the side guide with one X. That forms a perpendicular right corner, uh, 90 degrees right triangle. And on a sheet fed press, we need to have two side guides because when we turn the sheet, uh, we've changed the side of the side guide. Again, uh, when you do fronts and backs, it's important to have good front to back register. Now to have a folding layout, um, you typically want to have a folding dummy. It can be the same size or it can be a miniature smaller version. Think of a folding dummy as a sample or kind of like a prototype. It gives you instructions and directions on how to do the pre-press layout. Grain direction is always important when you consider the press layout. We want the grain always to be parallel with the press cylinders, the fold, and the binding spine. So the grain direction is important in the press room in for folding considerations and for binding. Now, if you have to, uh, on thicker papers, you can score or crease. This allows you to get a clean fold against or across the grain direction without getting any cracking. Um, so if you look at this illustration here, this is the spine or the backbone at the fold with the grain parallel, we have no cracking. Here, it's against or across the grain and the paper is cracking. Some more terms and definitions. Uh, plate bend, that's the distance from the edge of the plate to where the plate bends. Some people call this a setback or layback. Uh, the gripper is a mechanical finger that will bite the paper on the impression cylinders and pull it through the press. So we have the gripper bite, the gripper margin, or the gripper edge. You cannot print in this area. So it's typically on small duplicators, 3 16 and on larger printing presses, 5 8 of an inch. Pre-press needs to get this information from the press room. Uh, a form is a flat press sheet. So that flat press sheet has two sides. It has a top or front and it has a bottom or a back. So if you have multiple forms, we would number them with a number and a letter, one F for front and one B for back. A signature is a folded form with multiple pages. It could be a four pager, an eight pager, or a 16 pager. And those pages are in the correct sequence order and they have the correct orientation for a binding. More terms and definitions here. Head and foot, so you often talk about head to head or foot to foot or head to foot. And on the Ryobi 2800 duplicator, uh, if you're standing at the delivery, 
you want to be able to look down into the delivery and see it right reading from left to right, top to bottom. So that you'd want to strip or impose with the foot at the gripper. A lip or a lap is the extra paper space that you're going to need if you're going to do a saddle stitch. So the machine has to open up the signature and remove the signature from a pocket or a hopper bin. That's the purpose of the lip or the lap. It can be on the high side or the low side folio page numbers. Uh, the gutter is a separating area or space. It's usually white or blank. It doesn't have to be. And it's between pages or between items. And a butt dead cut is a single trim, finished edge to finish edge. In order to do that, you must have a common bleed or no bleed. Continuing with definitions here, number up, sometimes referred to as number on or number out. This is when you have multiple items uh, and they are the same item and they repeat. So in the old days, we had machines called step and repeat photo composers that would, steep, uh, would step the image and repeat the image into horizontal rows and vertical columns. This photograph here is of a Mizomex uh, from about 1980. Then we have combinations and gang runs. Uh, this means we have different items or SKUs, which are st uh, st standard kit units, stocking kit units. Um, business cards, think about visit, Vista Print, uh, Web to Press. You'd have multiple business cards, combination gang. And the whole purpose of a combination gang is that you want to share the cost between multiple customers so everyone pays a lower price. But to do a combination gang, you got to look at the quantities and uh, make sure that when you're done printing, you have the proper quantities for those number out. Nesting, this is important in folding carton and packaging labels. You might have to take those cartons and reverse them because of their odd shapes. So this is an example of a reverse nested where all these tucks and these flaps uh, are fitting into each other because they're uh, an odd shape. Okay, the other thing we have to include on the press form layout are all these additional marks that we need. For example, you might want to have a slug ID. It gives you the job number, the date, the color of the plate so you don't hang the wrong plates on the wrong press units, the form number, the side, front or back, and what uh, curve you might be using. Um, is it a linear curve or is it a, a bump up or a cutback curve and maybe even the LPI screen ruling so know you know if you're printing on coated paper or uncoated paper. You want marks for position so you know you have the pr proper position or lay on the sheet. Maybe you want a side guide mark. Certainly you want to have these register bullseyes that know that you're fitting. Uh, color bars, not only just the solids but the overprints and the screen tints and gray balance. And then for cutting and trimming, you want trim marks. And then if you're printing packaging, printing, or labels, and if you want to avoid um, a print defect called ghosting or re-rolling or starvation, you might have some takeoff bars or takeoff blocks. Okay, let's compare the different types of layouts. Um, there's basically five layouts that we have. Single-sided, sheet-wise, work and turn, work and flop, and perfecting. Let's fill out this table in terms of what gripper edge is used, what side guide edge is used, how many make readies you need, and how many print passes there are. So for single sided, one, there's only one gripper, uh, there's only one side guide, there's only one make ready, and there's only one pass. Single sided is typically used when you have a C1S coated one side paper, often used in uh, label printing, folding cartons, uh, things like that. Sheet-wise, sometimes just abbreviated S slash W, is sometimes called working back. Uh, you use the same gripper, but you use a different side guide. You need two sets of make readies, one for the front and one for the back. Therefore, you need two passes. So let's take a better look at this. Let's zoom in. So you would have 
a form with fronts only. After you print the fronts, you would take those plates off and put another set of new plates on that are just for the backs. You would keep the same gripper edge, but you would turn the sheet, like turning the page from left to right. This is called a sheet wise or a working back. Okay, then we have a work and turn, sometimes just abbreviated D, uh, W slash T. You're going to use the same gripper. You're going to use a different side guide, but for efficiencies, you only have one set of plate make readies, but you still need the two passes. So let's take a look at this in detail. Here, you have two on, two out, two up. On the one same set of plates, you're printing the fronts and the backs simultaneously. So on the first printing pass, uh, you print the fronts and the backs. But on a second printing pass, you keep the same plates on, you keep the same gripper, but you turn the sheet over. And what happens is the front backs up the back and the back backs up the front. So that when you cut this in half vertically, uh, you get two pieces out that are done. So you have to consider run length here because if the run length is too short, uh, you'll be holding the press waiting for the inks to dry so you're not taking advantage of the productivity advantages here. So the inks have to dry sufficiently enough, we call that setting, so that you can handle the paper, wind it, jog it, aerate it, turn it over, so you don't get any marking on the feeder table or between transfer cylinders or impression cylinder piling. Okay, and again, the center line is vertical here, and you always have to have an even number out. Twos, fours, sixes, things like that. Okay. Another type of imposition or layout is called work and flop. Here we use a different gripper. We use the same side guide. There's only one set of make ready plates but there's two passes. So let's take a look at this in detail. So here, it's kind of like a work and turn. We have a front and a back on the same press form, but the center line is no longer vertical. The center line is now horizontal. So on the first pass, you're printing fronts and backs simultaneously. But on a second pass, you keep the same plates, but now you tumble or flop the sheet using a different different gripper edge, but you keep the same side guide edge. Um, the problem with a work and tumble or a work and flop is that if the paper is not exactly the size, any error in the paper gets doubled. So if you're off by a 32nd, that'll then become a 1 16th error when you flop or tumble the sheet. So you might have to actually cut the paper to make sure that it's very accurately to size. And then let's show you uh, a perfecting form. Here we use a different gripper. We use the same side guide. There's two make readies and there's only one single press pass. So let's take a look at this. Uh, you have the fronts on one set of plates. You have the back on the other set of plates. And perfecting means that in a single pass through the press, we can print on both sides of the paper. So on a sheet fed press, these perfectors are typically called convertible because you can switch them back and forth um, either straight, one-sided, or perfect. So it's called a convertible. Now on web printing presses, web printing presses typically print perfecting simultaneously uh, blanket to blanket. Now on some web presses, the perfecting is not done simultaneously, but it's done sequentially, uh, and you use a right angle turnover bar for that. Um, okay, now just a, a footnote here. In digital printing, if you print on one side only, that's called simplex. And in digital printing, if you print on both sides, that's called duplex. Okay, I think that takes care of that image. So let's bring some closure here. When and where to impose? Well, you have choices. Um, you can uh, impose in a page design program. That's basically doing it manually. 
or you can do it in specialized imposition software. Probably the most famous one is Kodak, and they have a program called Preps. I think the current version is 8.4. And then we see in this more often where we do the imposition automatically in the workflow using the RIP or the DFE. So in workflows, AGFA has Apigee, EFI Ferry has Impose, ESCO has uh, Art Pro as a spelling typo, I apologize. Fujifilm has XMF, Heidelberg has Prenect, Kodak has Prenergy, and Screen has TrueFlow. So, uh, thank you for uh, watching and listening to this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Uh, please look at another video I'm going to show you that shows you actual production samples of work and flop and work and tumble jobs. Until the next time, goodbye.